Uh, so moving into the offense, uh, th- there's a lot of good things that this offense did. Number one, I would tell you, um, I heard Gordon on the way in when I was stuck in traffic in, in here. I was listening to it. <laughs> said, uh, you know, they're, they're, the box score showed time of possession, penalties, rushing yards, and turnovers that LSU won all of those. I would say the biggest thing for me, and, and again, I'm, I'm biased to the to the run game because I'm a former running back and line coach, but – the, the run game was one of the biggest things that they did. That's how you control the clock. That's how you control time possession. If your running backs are good at holding the ball, that's how you handle turnovers. You're not pushing the ball too hard, you know, in the pass game, and you do it when you need it. But these guys got the run game going, so if you kick me up there. Um, so the, the offense here is starting to run through this revamped offensive line. I think everybody's seeing that. These young tackles, but the guys inside – uh, you know, Charles Turner uh, <clears throat> have really stepped up and done some good things. So if you're looking here, so it's John Emery. Where's he been all year? Making plays occasionally. <clears throat> but here he goes. Biggest game of the year. Is he tackled right here? Not yet. Is he tackled right here? Not yet. Not That's yet. Big 50. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Mm. That was five yards, and it, and it wasn't all him. I get it. But I want you to watch what happens – Watch, watch the, watch the rest of our guys right here. Watch mm-hmm. the rest of these guys say, you know what? No, we're going to push you. And that's legal. Every single one of those, there's five offensive linemen standing over the top of that pile right now. And and I can tell you right now, they're, they are more pumped about that. Look at 50. Look, look at him. That, that, right, that, that builds, that builds up. It's, I don't, confidence isn't even a word. It's a swagger. It's, it's a, a mentality. Yeah, it's a mentality. And you can see it starting to show. And I think... These two guys are bringing it out in these other guys. And then Charles Turner, I've been around Charles Turner a little bit while I was there. He's smart, but he's got, he's got a little bit of just kind of that. When he wants to be an ass, he can just totally just go out there and just be a total turd, you know what I mean? And that's what I think he's, he's, he's starting to grow into. And I well, thought this – Yeah, because you got, you got Will Campbell and Emory Jones who are both assassins on the football field. When you're around a bunch of – you know, when you're around it, you kind of tend to be it. Yeah, so here, here's that look, and you can see John Emery's just he. There's a point where he's off the ground. Uh, he, he's he's just being he's just being carried at that point, and that's where that's where that that mentality comes on. So I want you to watch the o, the O line movement right here. So the ball's on the 44 yard line right here. I'm gonna I'll end up pausing it, mm. but this is Alabama. Mm. Yeah, people are gonna say, well, that's not much. That's a lot. This back gets past the line of scrimmage before he even gets touched. And that's all this is is an inside zone. Look, he doesn't get touched till probably two yards past the line of scrimmage. And, and look at the movement still going. So the point of this is, is just if you want to talk about just overall mentality of, of the line. And, and even, even 86 is in here. And I think I have this from the other angle. I want you to watch the tight end here. This is, 86, 86 is a true freshman, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have to say it. It's cut, but I want you to watch 86 go in there. Let's see if we can see it from this angle. He goes in there and takes that linebacker on right there and just – Starts manhandling him. Bam. Getting turned. That's, that's a true freshman going in there. Not only And that's a true freshman that caught the touchdown to win the game. So you're, you're talking about a, a lot of good things that you're seeing. So this is a weak side counter run. Again, this is the same thing. Uh, that at we show Alabama run with the read zone or the, with the read by the quarterback. They're going to bring the tight end in here. So they're going to pull the guard. They're going to pull him. They're actually going to read. I believe they're reading him back here just like they were. That's but they hand, they hand off to Armani. And I love seeing this kid get involved. But the fact that he stiff arms this guy, the fact that Armani stiff arms this guy, puts him on his face to get the play started right there gets around the corner and then just makes play. I, I love seeing Armani go and get involved because, you know, he, he was, he was starting to become that guy early mm-hmm. in the year and it's just good to see him. And you can see his, his excitement there. You can see, I mean, look at these guys running down the field. Did you think that that was hold on uh Dre Jenkins on the outside? That's, that's uh, got called back. Yeah. I mean, probably, but again, those things get Happy. called. They, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's holding on every play. Right. Uh, Josh Williams, uh, we've all talked about Josh, but this is this is just a strong, strong run by this kid, and that's that's three Alabama guys hanging on him. But again, if you look here, there's there's 
look at where he gets hit. He doesn't get hit till he gets through the line of scrimmage. And you got two guys hanging in a guy on his legs here. And it's just – it's good to see mm. that kid with that kind of mentality. You can see the rest of them getting in there trying to push around. Uh, going to, to Josh Williams here. Now, this was – I call this – this is an explosive run. This was one of those ones that uh, just – Huh. You don't necessarily get through Alabama's line that mm-hmm. easily, and and I believe I've got the other angle. This angle's great. So this is this is a simple blocking scheme as it comes, right there, and it's going downhill. I mean that's as simple as it gets. Charles misses his block, but okay, his guy's on the ground. That's a humongous. You're about to schnutty him. That right, that right there. <laughs> I'm setting him up for but the schnutty. Every, everybody him. talks about NFL, the, the you know an NFL hole. Like this, this is a SEC hole. I mean that that to me is as big of a of a gap as you're going to find in a run game. That's a canal. And, and and right there, just the fact of the line doing what they do. Yeah, Charles got beat a little bit, but he got beat in the right. He got beat in the right direction. If you're going to get beat, get beat that way. Mm-hmm. And and it worked out. So. Uh, we talked about this one earlier, but this was impressive to me, man. This is third and this is third and seven, and it's the end of the game. It's fourth quarter. Game's on the line. You're down. You're down, and right now, a field goal. I don't know how much time was left here, but a field goal, you still have to get a stop and hope that you can get the ball back and do all that. This is third and seven, and they said, you know what? Screw this. We're running the ball, and they're running that thing where they're see so see how they're leading around there. Do you, do you recognize that play? Yeah, he could have kept it. No, but do you recognize that play? Yeah. That play was the play that they scored in overtime. Oh, except he just handed it. He handed it this yes. time. He handed it this time. They he pulled it. a different formation. He pulled it in overtime, and he had that lead blocker going around, and he also had Josh Williams ended up lead blocking that way. But point being is that when you pull the ball as a quarterback, you know, you do that. But if you hand the ball off on third and seven as a running back, I mean – it's the ultimate trust. You you got one that forty two is one of their better players, and you talk about breaking this tackle. Again, I talked about the stumble bum and how he pulls. See how he's pulling his shoulders back up because you you gain your balance when your shoulders are up. You don't if your shoulders are leaning forward, you're trying to run into something or run or dive or whatever it is. But if you're going to run and you want balance, your shoulders have got to come back up. Your head has got to come back up. So when he pulled that back up, and then again, I talked about rolling with pressure. So this guy's trying to pull him and rotate him that way and yank that ball out. If he's if Josh keeps pulling this way and fights against it, that arm's going to get yanked back, which will open up the ball to everybody else, and and that's where a lot of fumbles happen. But if Josh sits. rotates this way with him and sits down, it's just use the physics to your advantage and just go down. There's there's a point as as a running back or as a ball carrier, you're you're done. Right. You're done. Give up. Go down. Just go to the next play. That's what Josh did. I thought that was a great job by Josh um, looking at that. And then going into some of the stuff that they were doing in the past game, I thought this was really good. They were finding a way to get the ball to Kayshawn in a very easy way. This is just a little slot curl route right here. So they were running him off and then coming back to the ball, and it was they got this to Kayshawn two or three times in this game. And, again, it's – they're figuring out ways to get the ball to to their best players, and so you'll see he'll really he just really just runs up and just kind of sits right there, and it's a simple simple way. And, you, and look at the anticipation of Jaden Daniels when he throws this ball. So I'll, I'll pause it when Jaden Daniels throws this ball. He's throwing this ball. Kayshawn's not even out of his break yet. So, uh, so they're getting they're getting the ball to their players in, in, in ways that are simple. It's not, again, Kayshawn's down here. It's going to be the same route. And it's getting the ball to, to, to your players in simple, simple ways. And look, even 14's like, got me again. Simple. Come back to the ball. Ball's already in the air. Come back to the ball. Trust in your receiver. And, and you make plays. So I thought that was one thing that they're doing with, with the offense that's just getting the ball to those guys. Now, this right here was a, was a pretty cool deal. So they were actually trying to run like a fake screen. I believe he motions over, and then they're going to like do a fake screen right here and try to run deep. Well, it didn't work. It, didn't, it got covered. So the cool thing about this is, is this is the kind of, of 
of team you got. See how they're running deep now, and Kayshawn's kind of sitting here like they're going to fake the screen and, and throw deep on them. Well, oh, it's not there. Scramble. Here goes – I don't know if you saw him, but Kayshawn kind of started running across the field right here. Big play. Huge play. First down right there. I mean, that's – and you'll see it from this angle right here is he's going to run across deep, deep. Kayshawn's hanging out over here off the field right here, uh, off the screen right there. You can't, you can't see him, but now here, here he comes. He's just – all he does now is scramble, though. He's just running to that void right there. And big play by both the quarterback and the and, and Kayshawn. So those are the kind of things that if those things can keep happening, those, that's how you beat these really, really good teams. Um, looking at uh, – at Jaden Daniels, I thought this is something I haven't seen from him recently. Because remember, you remember Stewie? Yeah, he had all those bad throws on third down yeah. early in the year, and he was behind behind players. Well, watch, watch this. He's going to boot to the left. Now he's throwing. Now it's if you're a right-handed quarterback and you're and you're trying to throw maybe to the flat. Okay, sure, your your shoulders are faced that way. It's when you need to throw the ball back in this direction that you've got to throw across your body. You always hear people throw, saying throwing across your body. We'll see how he throws across his body. But look at the type of, of throw he got off on this, and he ended up making the play. And that, to me, is, is, is another reason that you see progress from Jaden Daniels is just being able to still make that play across his body. And it's not um, – he's not having a bad throw, not making bad things happen to the offense. Uh, we're talking about beating this – they played this brackets-type coverage where they were trying to kind of funnel everything inside – and you can see right here, you got these two safeties kind of hanging back, and they're going to try to funnel everything inside of these safeties. Well, there's a way to beat this. And I'll, as you see here, all they're going to do is, is motion uh, Taylor across. See how this guy's got – see how they're, they're, they're trying to keep these guys bracketed between the two. So when you run this guy deep, they start to fall off, and all you do is just run that quick out right there. And right there, see how the guy on the outside is actually playing uh, – Guy on the outside, he'll turn his shoulders and start running. I was about to say his back's the, turn. the guy that comes over here has got his he, his eyes are this way on Mason Taylor, who's going to do this. So you've got this going on. So they're both kind of hanging. He's he's dropping, and he's just going to break out. It's a simple way to beat that kind of coverage. And uh, in all reality, uh, I mean, this is a it's a out it's a five yard out route, and you end up getting almost twenty yards on it. And it's a simple way to beat that that type of coverage. You'll see him. Yeah, you can see Herbstreit just gave gave that away there, but that's a, that's an easy easy way to beat this coverage because they're waiting these these two guys are waiting in the middle because they they do they're trying to bracket everything they want everything to go in here they don't want that out route to go there but that's how that's one way to beat it and uh, I thought they did a good job with that that happened a couple times actually you can see here this is uh, just showing. Mason Taylor, there we go. All right, so we talked about this play in, in the show earlier, but I want everybody else to see this because this, uh, this is impressive. This was, you know, everybody says it was a catch of the night. Neighbors are going to run down the sideline. He's going to drop a, a dime to him on the outside. The only reason this play got off, I want you to watch Josh Williams right here. This guy's blitzing full speed. He's going to flip this guy in the air. That That's why everybody loves Josh Williams on the team. That's why – that's why teams are um, are starting to realize that this guy's not just a, a backup running back. When you've got a guy who can go out here, get that guy on the ground, not only that, but get his feet pointed in the air, that's that's a great cut block by him. And then obviously this catch, which we'll show from this other angle, this is why you have a guy like Malik Neighbors on your team, and this is why you don't give up on a guy like Malik Neighbors after maybe he had those, those punts early in the year. But he goes and makes this catch. Not only does he make this catch, some guys are going to jump and they're going to try to fall back in bounds and they'll turn their body back in bounds, which the, puts the football in front of them, which that's where this guy's coming from. He turns this way, puts the ball away. That, to, that way, if this guy does hit him, that at least the ball's going out of bounds. It's not popping out and intercepted or falling fall as a fumble. But the fact that he got his, his, his foot down and protected the ball, that's uh, – that's big time play by that kid, and he's. He, I think he's. Uh, he's really come along. So, uh, the more you can get the ball to those kind of guys, I think you know everybody knows what Kayshawn can do. Uh, now, Jaden Daniels, he he showed some stuff in the scramble runs this week that I thought was really really good by what he did. So, 
there's a point where when you're playing a man, when you're playing man coverage and everybody runs off. So there's no underneath, uh, no underneath players because they're blitzing five guys. So you see there's, there's five guys blitzing right here. Everybody else is, is taking off into man coverage. There's a time where a quarterback can say, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to take advantage of it. And I'm going to run. And I thought the good thing that this kid did was he knew when to go down like right here. Yep. I'm getting down. He, he understands that mm-hmm. as opposed to trying to make something happen that maybe he doesn't need to happen. But as you can see, they're playing that, that brackets ish kind of two man look, but you got, you got man, man, really man, man. And then you can see they're trying to take that same outcut away right there, but you got these two safeties playing deep. Well, there's nobody here, but you can see that I think they actually are spying this guy. Well, I'm sorry, but that guy ain't making the play. I was about to say, spying with a 300. That guy ain't making the play. Pounds, so, <clears throat> there's a difference between spying with Perkins and spying with that guy. <laughs> and you can see here, he, he knew how he knew when to get down, which is which is good. This one was, um, was I thought, was, was pretty good by what he's trying to do. So, this was actually that same deal where they're leading him and he's going to go here. I mean, every, everything's going over here, as you can see. I mean, the runs, he's running over here. Well, he's, he gets over here and goes, uh-oh. He actually reverses course and ends up making a big play. And then that, he knew to slide. He understands. Listen, there's a – I'm good. We just got yardage. I need to get to the next play. So uh, that was a that's, – that's growth by that kid. And I thought the fact that, I mean – Everything, everything, this whole play is built to go that way. But he reversed course. Your guys are still blocking. That's the biggest thing. You got guys still fighting back here. They don't know the they don't know the ball's coming back there. That that literally is improv. But the fact that those guys were still blocking on the backside, I thought was a really cool deal. This was John Emery's catch for that the touchdown. All this is is a it's a it's called a rail route. And when I get here, I. I don't ask me why it's called a rail. Somebody explained it to me one time. Hold on. Look. So they're going to end up running running him out, but he's running right here. Uh, and if somebody comes and comes at him right now, he'll take off and run down the field, and they'll try to throw it over the top. If they're playing deep coverage and he comes out here and there's really nobody in this area covering him, they'll get him the ball really quickly. So if you, as you watch, his guy blitzes. So technically they're actually hot right here. So as he's hot, he'll get his eyes around right here because there's nobody covering right here. So he gets the ball right here. Now, this is where you you you've got guys that can make plays and guys that are just guys. So there's a point where some of these guys are going to be trying to run through this guy. Some guys are, you know, going to try to do something and get tackled. This is the fact that he dipped. It's it's hard to see from this angle, but he dipped his shoulder. He dipped that ball down to where he's not going to get that ball knocked out. And I think he said something about this was one of his Pop Warner moves, but see, it's kind of that dead leg. Uh, see, I don't. If you fall for that on the sideline, if you really think he's going to go that way, there's nowhere to go. I mean, that that's where is this guy right here? You got to understand that. And but see how he dips that ball down, and he's got that ball as tight as he can to his body, and he he can't hit what you can't see, coach. Yeah, so he he's using his body as. Um, you know, as a shield to it, but he dips. He's trying to get his – he's actually trying. He'd like to get his shoulder, you know, back to where he would like for his shoulder to be pushing through. So, really, this guy's hitting the back – his back here. And he's trying to see how he does that. And then, at this point, now just go score. So, I thought that was a, a great job by John. I think you're seeing things that that kid does. Everybody knew he could do it. Um, the, the, people are going to go, okay, great, goal line run. This is great. You know, get the sniffer locations again. Okay, great. He scored. I want, I want you to see this from the end zone because from the end zone, this is where I think Josh Williams has shown that he is becoming not only a good back, but he could be a great back. So that angle, great. There's a, this angle right here. Okay, so see how he's diving right here? He lands on top of somebody. And when he lands on top of, of this guy's leg right here, I want you to watch this leg right here, his left leg. So it's down, and he pushes that leg into the ground right there and pushes off. That's what scored. That's how he scored. He didn't score because his momentum was going. He was stopped. He scored because he stuck that. He, he's going to stick this left leg 
that's up in the air. He's going to stick that leg down in the ground right here, and that's where all that strength work comes in. And that's how he kept his other leg off the ground. So that was a great job just physically by Josh Williams doing that. Um, talking about the, uh, the touchdown to Mason Taylor, again, they're, when they come out here and they've got guys just straight across the board here, they're going to be playing some kind of brackets coverage, which turns into man. Um, so what's going to happen is when he runs up here and he goes out, this guy's going to turn into man coverage. These two guys are just kind of hanging out back here. I'm sorry, that, sorry, this guy comes back here and runs that. These two guys are keeping their eyes on them until the ball's thrown, then they'll fall off. So as you see here, that's, how, that's why that guy's kind of falling off back here. You can see the guy falling off at the bottom. But he throws his ball to a spot where pretty much it was him or nobody and was able to get the ball in. So... Uh, that takes work. That's not something that they just up and tried to do. They've practiced this throw a bunch of times. I mean, this is one of those things you work on in the summer. You work on these things with your players. Uh, when, when they're by themselves and working out, they work on these type of throws. So it's cool to see it come to light. And the fact that, that he held on to the ball, he's such a big guy, strong hands, and finished the play. So obviously, huge play. Now, the OT run. So this is the touchdown run in overtime. So he's going to end up, instead of the tight end coming from this side, the tight end was just on this side. So, yes, diff different formation, same play. So he's actually coming out here to block for him. Josh Williams is running a run. It's a run for Josh Williams. What Josh Williams does down the field is totally extra. This guy's down here blocking. So when Jaden Daniels pulls his ball, look at Josh Williams – he, just, he says, you know what, I didn't get the ball, but I'm going to go make something happen. And that's just called ball the backer. If you don't get the ball, go get the backer or go get somebody else. So right here, Josh Williams says, okay, I'm going to go get somebody else. Jaden Daniels is running here. He's got two other blockers in front of him. You get this guy blocked. Here's Josh Williams down here. Josh pushed this guy on his butt, and you've got your receiver blocking his guy out of bounds. Eli Ricks. Is that Eli Ricks? You got him blocking him out of bounds. This is this – is, uh, that's as good of a teaching tape of what, how to, when you don't get the ball, what to do. If you're the blocker that's blocking for the quarterback, what to do. And do receivers blocks matter? They're saying that this was a block in the back by Mason Taylor, but he had him blocked already. No, he was already blocking him. He already had his hands on him. He already had his hands on him. That, that's the difference. And then, again, you're, you're blocking oh, it. I mean, Eli Ricks is getting pumped. So you got Josh Williams putting him on his butt. You got – him, him on his butt. You got him getting turned, and again, that's 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 as easy of a touchdown as you're probably going to get for for Jaden Daniels. And again, here comes Josh Williams into the screen. You can see his guy fall falling down over here. Um, that was a that was a great job by LSU's offense. So, um, looking at now the two point conversion. So this is like the play of the game everybody's talking about. I do want to make a point. They knew probably on Friday that they were going to run a play that if, if it came down to it, they were going to run two point play. That's why everybody's saying Brian Kelly looks so confident in it. He had already made that decision. That decision was done. That was not a, a, a spur of the moment decision. He had made that decision early in the week. He was going to run a two point play. The thing that Bama was look, Bama literally, I mean, he's not where number 13, but he's really the 12th man on the field there. So he, he's, he's, they got too many guys on the field. So they're screwed up and they've already called a timeout. This is after the timeout. So what they're going to end up doing is Mason Taylor is going to run over here and then on a dead sprint go to the corner of the end zone, go to the front pylon down here. These two guys are just running interference right here because the guy who's having to cover him is going to either have to run over the top or if he runs underneath, he's not going to make the play. Or if he runs through him, he ain't getting there. So they knew right now that they knew they were going to get this coverage. <clears throat> And as you see here, when number nine's trying to go out here, and by the time it's all done, because when this guy runs to the flat here, this guy is the flat player. These two guys have these two guys. So what's going to end up happening when he runs over here is you'll see from a different angle pretty much, but he had to, nine had to run through all this to get over here, and it was just enough for him to get the ball and get turned in the end zone. And that was a good, I mean – it's good scheme. It's good. Uh, it's good execution. You know, but 
if you look, he catches the ball and he's, his momentum can now take him because he's a big body. There's a reason they threw it to him and not one of the other guys. You throw it to your big body so that your big body can turn. And if, this, if nine does hit him like this, it's a glancing blow and he goes in the end zone. So that, that's the reason you throw it to those bigger body guys. You don't, you don't necessarily want to throw that to a smaller guy who might be able to, because you can see right here, glancing blow, get turned into that, that spot right there. So, again, very good. Uh, but, again, they had that plan from the get-go. And uh, you could tell right here, I mean, the excitement level right there. It's, 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 it's cool to see, um, you know. And then I've, I've finished it with that. So, um, you know, that, that, that look on Saban's face, that, <laughs> that's – you know, that's, that's a look, as a, look at the as, night as a tiger, as a, as an LSU fan. If you're, if you're watching this as an LSU fan, you love to see that. So uh, if you can kick me off for a second.